I should make it clear, you know, I don't believe this stuff. I find believing in these high-flown, complicated synthetic systems to come off sort of like pathology. So I entertain ideas, but I don't give belief over what I do. I'm a meme spreader. What, what I do. I'm a meme spreader. What, 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 what I do. I'm a meme spreader. Meme spreader. A meme replicator. Naturally, this question arose in our group. Why us? Why us? Why are the aliens revealing the unified field theory of space and time to us? And the mushroom just replied without hesitation. Because you don't believe in anything. And that apparently is what's required. Do you all know that Van Morrison song about no guru, no method, no teacher, just you and me and nature in the garden? I think that's actually where it's at. So what I do, I'm a meme spreader. What what I do, I'm a meme spreader. What what what, what I do, I'm a meme spreader. Meme spreader. A meme replicator. <laughs> And the purpose of these teaching things is to turn you into fellow replicators of the meme. Of the meme. Of the meme. Who should go forth and tell other people, tell other people, tell other people, go, go forth and tell other people, tell other people, tell other people, and copy it into their head, C copy it into their head, C copy it into their head, and this meme will spread. So what I do, I'm a meme spreader. What, what I do, I'm a meme spreader. What, 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 what I do, I'm a meme spreader. Meme spreader. A meme replicator. Because we cannot evolve faster than our language. The edge of being is the edge of meaning. And somehow we have to push the edge of meaning. We have to extend it, because if we appear to be confronted by insoluble problems, it's because we have the wrong language for dealing with this problem. You learn that with computers. Certain languages are good for certain kinds of problems. We have to constantly evolve language and push it forward. So what I do... I'm a meme spreader. What what I do? I'm a meme spreader. What 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 I do? I'm a meme spreader. Meme spreader. psychedelics is they are catalysts to the imagination they were back 
a hundred thousand years ago the imagination which was just this glimmering this iridescence on the surface of ape cognition was under the influence of the reciprocal feedback of self-reflection that is created by watching your own mind your own mind watching your own mind watching your own mind because it has suddenly become interesting because it has suddenly been flooded by a psychoactive amine that iridescence has been coaxed into language art architecture, music, poetry, the whole ball of wax. But now we know these things. We can uncover the secret of our origin. I'm very keen for the notion of what I call the archaic revival. And the archaic revival is this overarching metaphor that is the way for us to go to save our necks at this point. When a culture gets into trouble, instinctively what it does is it goes back through its own past until it finds a moment where things seem to make sense. And then it brings that moment forward into the present. The archaic revival brings that moment forward into the present. The archaic revival brings that moment forward into the present. The archaic revival brings that moment forward into the present. When medieval Christianity no longer made sense to a major percentage of the people of Western Europe. The intellectuals of that time instinctively reached backwards into the past, looking for a stable model. And finally they reached the golden age of Periclean Athens. And there they found Plato, Aristotle, the dramatists, and they created classicism. Classicism was brought to birth in the 1400s, 2,000 years after the death of Plato. We are the children of this classical revival, which we call the Renaissance. Our theories of law, our theories of government, our notion of justice, all drawn from classical Greek and Roman models, brought back from the dead 500 years ago by a bunch of Italian investment bankers who thought this was a good model to hang their civilization on. Bring that moment forward into the present. The archaic revival. Bring that moment forward into the present. The archaic revival. Bring that moment forward into the present. The archaic revival. Bring that moment forward into the present. The archaic revival. So we must now reach far back into time for a new cultural model. Our crisis is so great that we have to reach back to the high Paleolithic, to the moment immediately before the invention of agriculture and the creation of the dominator ego. that I've had of the kind of future utopia is it opens on a world which looks like our world of 10,000 years ago. People 
people live tribally, they are physically perfect, they are naked, they want for nothing, they appear to have no material culture whatsoever. Then when you shift your point of view so that you're inside one of these people's heads, you discover that when they close their eyes, there are menus hanging in space in front of them. And by glancing at these menus with a certain intensity, they are able to make their way into a culture that is entirely three-dimensionally present for them, but which nowhere impinges on the world of three-dimensional space. Sort of the idea that you could have the Vatican Library installed optionally when you have dental work. I don't think this is that far-fetched. I mean, a lot of money is going toward this. Money can be made from this. We have to figure out, unless we're ready to, you know, hang the rascals, then we're going to have to figure out some way to make money out of saving the world. Saving the world. Saving the world. Saving the world. We're going to have to figure out some way to make money out of saving the world. 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 And I think these entertainment technologies are the way to go. I think that what we should all be trading in in 15 or 20 years from now is ideas is ideas, and ideas should be worth more than anything. is just a 25,000 year dash from the trees to the starship. History is just a 25,000 year dash from the trees to the starship. And while it's going on, it's wild and woolly, but it only lasts like that. And then you're in the starship. 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 Because we are like bacteria or something in the shortness of our lifespan. To us, 25,000 years, you can get lost in the middle of that and you can't see either end. But from the point of view of a species, it's just instantaneous. History is just a 25,000 year dash from the trees to the starship. History is just a 25,000 year dash from the trees to the starship. 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 You know, this thing happened 65 million years ago. A very large object collided with the Earth. Everything on this planet, larger than a chicken, died. 
some people think in a single moment. But what's peculiar is there appears to have been a major dieback of species underway before the impact. That in the million years preceding the impact, there was some kind of echo crisis on the planet. And then this asteroid struck. You know, the dinosaurs that we find are the lumbering, enormous ones, but it's always agreed that there were a vast number of small-boned, gray-seal dinosaurs that were much smaller. Is it possible there was a breakout of intelligence? Is it possible that there was an intelligent species of a reptilian sort that was actually evolving a technical civilization which then caused this dieback of species? History is just a 25,000 year dash from the trees to the starship. History is just a 25,000 year dash from the trees to the starship. 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 Whenever you have intelligent life in the presence of large explosions, a safe bet is that the intelligent life is responsible for the large explosions. It may be that there was a war in heaven 60 million years ago. scenario for solving our problem is a mass migration into the past. We could literally dump this whole scene and go a hundred million years into the past of the planet, then set up there, then set up there in a confined zone. If it were only 10,000 years deep, it would never show in any fossil record. If we held ourselves to a 10,000 year wide window, that's such a brief period of time and so long ago that we would basically just appear to have disappeared. This is a haunted planet, and we are a haunted species. I think this is a haunted planet, and we are a haunted species. Every solid body in the solar system is heavily cratered. I think this is a haunted planet, and we are a haunted species. Some of these craters are planet smashers. There is considerable and ever-increasing evidence that the cosmic neighborhood is barely unstable. Barely unstable. Is it possible that biology is somehow prescient? That biology somehow exists in eternity and knows the fate of the planet? And that what we are is a desperate strategy of escape and that the planet actually can sense the possibility of a complete life-destroying asteroidal impact. I think this is a haunted planet and we are a haunted species. I think this is a haunted planet and we are a haunted species. Every solid body in the solar
solar system is heavily cratered. I think this is a haunted planet, and we are a haunted species. A species, a bipedal monkey with binocular vision, has been led into the antechamber of nature's secrets in order to build machineries and unleash energies sufficient to either deflect that incoming object or flee the planet in anticipation of it. I think life is tremendously tenacious and has an immense capacity to organize itself to meet any crisis provided it knows it's coming. There are scars on this planet, enormous scars. There's a scar a billion and a half years old on the Canadian shield that is twice the size of the lunar crater Copernicus. Now, what is going on? What is going on? What is going on? What is going on? Now, what is going on? What is going on? What is going on? What is going on? This thing that came down 50,000 years ago out near Flagstaff, Arizona, that was a tiny object. It was something like 30 meters across. It was moving nine times the speed of a rifle bullet. It was six miles into the earth in the first second of impact. Everything within 800 miles died instantly. And this was a nothing burger, this thing. Uh, uh, an object 500 meters across, the planet would ring like a gong for 10,000 years. The thing which killed the dinosaurs, they now believe they have the impact point. At the time of the impact, the entire area was a shallow ocean. But what I find eerie about the location of this impact point is 65 million years afterwards on this exact spot, a civilization will arise obsessed with the end of time. A civilization will arise obsessed with the end of time and determined to give a date to it. It's within 110 miles of Chichen Itzu. It's near Zebel Chaltun. It's right in the heart of classic Maya country. What is going on? What is going on? What is going on? What is going on? What, 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 what is going on? What is going on? What, 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 what is going on? What is going on? It's very easy to smooth it all out and say, you know, that the Pentagon runs it all and so forth and so on. But once you start digging, I mean, the world is a labyrinth a sponge of interconnected labyrinthine interstices, the weirdest connections, you know, who knew who and what they were doing about it. And then, you know, these, these reports that come in, you know, and, and some are false and some are true, but the sum total of it all is to paint a picture of excruciating weirdness. Are 
real. These things are real. They have existential validity. They have the power to move hearts and change lives. If we can but bring them back into the domain of the group mind of the tribal campfire, we are surrounded by oceans of alien beauty, alien intent, bizarre ideas. I mean, I'm convinced that these things which the which the tykes offer in the DMT holding pan are um, idea systems. Ultimately, the time wave, which, you know, took me four years to create and requires computer assistance and all this stuff, it was just one of those things. I mean, they could, they have closets full of this stuff. And they just pull it out and show it to you and take it away. Oh, you like that? Try this. How about this? Yes. example of my contention that the world is made of language because whatever the crop circles are what they are is glyphs of some sort i mean they are designed to be seen it would be absurd to maintain that someone was trying not to be seen so these crop circles are to be looked at and then radiating out from the act of looking at them reality ripples Reality ripples, reality ripples like air above a desert highway. No one seems to think it's weird that all of these Earth Mysteries people in England, this tremendous mystery just happens to be within a three-hour drive of their front door. I mean, why isn't it happening in the steppes of Central Asia? Obviously, it seems to me, it is to be seen by the very people who would then offer an explanation of it. Of it. Well, now Jacques Vallée is the person who pioneered in the study of flying saucers. He said the way to understand flying saucers is don't ask who's inside or where do they come from. Ask what effect are they having? If you assume they are succeeding in what they want to do, then watch what they do and you will see what their purpose is. See what their purpose is. Okay, so what effect are the crop circles having? They are a magnet for the fringe establishment of the British Isles to come out of the woodwork and proclaim the imminence of some great event. And they have come more and more out on this limb. What I speculated to Rupert was that MI5, which is British intelligence, uh, it, it's 
possible that they could actually view the New Age as a resurgence of paganism that threatens the Christian establishment of Anglican England. And so what they have done is they've created a disinformation program. They will lure all these people out onto this limb where they are all saying, you know, couldn't be done by human beings, absolutely beyond the power of science to explain. And then they will reveal a team of MI5 folks who say, you know, watch, we'll do it for world TV. You people are all flakes. You should never have gained the power in this society that you have. And now you do have to go find honest work. with a yet more elaborate theory, which I somewhat prefer. The only country that has really taken an interest in these crop circles, other than the English themselves, are the Japanese. This has gotten immense coverage in Japan, in the popular press. When you go to these crop circles, the number of Japanese is astonishing. MITI, which is the Ministry of Trade and Industry, is obviously carrying on a clandestine project in the study of semiotics, in the study of the Western mind and how it relates to the manipulation of certain symbols. Because they are in charge of marketing and advertising and creating a marketing psychology in Japan. So what I think we're dealing with here is a ultra-clandestine team of ninja stem snappers who pose as Japanese tourists and television crews and so forth, and then at the drop of a hat can flash into this same stem snapping mode create these things and the press that it generates and the discussion provides a very deep index into the English mind. Notice how eerily appealing to the English mind this is and it's possible that you can extend this to the cattle mutilations of a few years ago in the Midwest. The relationship of cattle mutilations in the lonely western prairie under a crescent moon, the relationship of that image to the American mystique of the lonesome cowboy and the gun fight at the OK Corral and all that is eerily similar to the relationship of the English mind to its earth mysteries out there on the Salisbury Plain. It's a, a human agency and that therefore it's some kind of a disinformation project. Yeah. 